Oh my god, we're live. We're here. I both. I am so tired. But like D and D. There we go. Sorry, I was looking at the thing. I have everything we need pulled up, so haha, <laughs> I'm prepared in that way. Uh but as as you can see anybody watching I am also PNG today because it's one of those days. So D and D, D and D, PNG D and D. Is that a thing? That should be a. Th it probably is a thing. Probably is already, but like in a. Right, yeah, but like in a better way than this. Let me do this actually. Because apparently you're supposed to do that. Nothing will have changed for you guys. I just changed the title of the stream to put my Discord in there as, uh, you know, professionalism. Um, it's been a while. It's been like two weeks. Also, just now, your sub came through, Casey. <laughs> it's because I changed screens. Ha ha. Uh, it's been a little bit. It's been like two weeks. Do you guys remember what we were doing since last time? Oh, no. I don't either. We have to start over. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh shit. Happened too. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot to <laughs> Whoops. I forgot to unmute you guys, so it's just been me talking. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well we're here now. There, there we go. Yay. It's been a little bit, guys. It's been a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Misty. Everybody missed out on my totally really good bit about pizza. Yeah, it was like a good minute long. Everybody was cracking up except me. I had to hold my composure for for stream. It's professionalism. Professionalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's 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 horrible that nobody will ever hear the the joke again. Uh, but it's bit so it's been a little bit to to recap what was just <laughs> what was just said. <laughs> um, you guys, it was what was it? A month, I said. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Of you, downtime. Yes. Yep. Yeah, you got a month of downtime uh, after you guys uh, dispatched of whatever was happening in Harmony Hotel. Um, it seemed to be some kind of uh, devil or demon or just just some kind of weird, uh, not good entity that had been. Uh, no uh, good. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a a delinquent that was. Um, modifying the mind more it was it was just more just uh peer pressuring price into doing some some bad stuff on his behalf uh and the the probability of taking price over taking price's body over at, uh for the end game uh but nobody really knows that for sure because you guys uh sent it back to the depths from which it came uh after it was like what like East Borden. Yeah. Yeah, it's not... Uh, everybody thinks that the Nine Hells is some kind of different realm and, like, it's it's weird and, and un unworldly. No, it's just... It's just East Borden. <laughs> That's where all the demons and devils are from. Uh, but you guys, uh, you, you dispatched, brought Price back with you uh, to hopefully start getting a, a, a better handle on his abilities. Um... And it seems that over the month, it seems that he and uh, everybody else 
that has been taking some kind of lessons uh, from Echo have have kind of been getting a little bit of improvement down. So it would have been, I think, uh, Edna, did you say you were you were sitting in on lessons or, or no? Yeah, uh, helping out, sitting in, doing both. Right. Uh, everybody who was sitting in on lessons um, did get a little bit of improvement, uh, which is what I, I chalked the level up to, um, as well as... Some other things that have been going on. Zaboon, you... Uh, actually, everybody during the month... Uh, I am just now remembering. Um, went down into the basement while nobody else was home. To try and do a little looky-loo. And see what was going on down there. Because it, it seemed really... Uh, oh, sorry, burp. Secretive. Yeah, it seemed really secretive and, and, and shady. Uh, however, you didn't really find much... Uh, at least not much of anything threatening or secretive. Uh, you did find a whole bunch of files, a whole like a, more files on uh, some of the, the plaguing roaming bandits uh, that are associated with the ones that uh, affected you, Zaboon. Um, and you also found that more of, uh, more of the research that Echo is doing has kind of... It's kind of come to a standstill on that poison that you gave him. Uh, and then, and then there was the weird door, the weird bookshelf. Couldn't open. Yeah, it was a bookshelf that was locked for some reason. Uh, but after f uh, figuring that nothing there was really like a direct threat enough, um, you guys went about your your day, your the rest of your time off, uh, except Arthur, all during your month. Uh, you w did some more digging and found that some some not so great stuff is uh, possibly going on at one of the orphanages. Yes. Uh, you and Tig, you well, you got some some information from Tig about how the uh, the den mother at the orphanage that um that he had mentioned seemed to have been swapped out entirely. Uh, but nobody else uh, is saying anything about this. Uh, and then I think the most recent one, but like besides that, uh, would have been Grayson getting his gun training, right? Was that it? I think like, the last thing we kind of did was breaking in. That was like towards the end of the month. Was breaking in where? to the basement oh right that was that was like one of the most recent things okay never mind never mind never mind yeah i think it was like that with that and probably the orphanage discovery was i, I assume like the last week hey guys these are these are available on youtube for anybody to go back and watch and uh and i didn't so <laughs> but i will say uh at the end of the month um you guys will have uh the time will have elapsed and you have uh, you've been doing your own thing, um, and uh, Artemis will have. Uh, she's been telling you that she's that she's been working on a, a new, like she's been trying to find a new thing for you guys to do, a new project for you guys to to follow up on uh, for a little while, and she can't find one that's like your your speed, like not too important or or possibly dangerous um so she's just kind of been you, you do remember her uh whenever she leaves she gets back like either her and mugs or her mugs and echo whenever they leave they come back very very late sometimes they're gone for like days at a time um but by the time uh she gets back this time she uh she does tell you that she's getting farther along on uh, something has been showing up recently that seems like it could be more your speed. Uh, she'll know in a couple more days. Uh, is there anything that you guys would want to do that's kind of like that's kind of like the warning, the prep of, okay, you, there's like a, a day or two for you guys to before the next big mission. Um, so is there anything you guys want to do with like a couple of days? Like last minute things? Look, I don't know about you guys, but uh... I don't know if I told you about that orphanage I stopped by. Well, Pretty that's shady nice stuff. 
Wait, what? I, yeah. I thought you were doing like charity work or something. Why, why shade? Uh, I got some. I got word that the uh, old was headmistress uh, was swapped out quickly and replaced with a new one when someone started snooping around asking about missing kids. That's weird. Yeah, so. Highly suspicious. I don't know if you guys want to maybe check this out with me sometime. I know we got a mission coming up, or, but yeah, if anyone has any out. ideas, I'm up for it. I mean, personally, I, I, I'm kind of all all right with the prioritizing like missing kids. Yeah. <laughs> over, uh, I don't know, weird mission into another haunted mansion, which I also never want to do again. Just to be clear. Oh no, I 100% agree. Okay. But yeah. If anyone has any ideas? Or does kids have been going missing? Someone went around snooping. Uh, got some information, and that person who gave out the information was uh, quickly removed and swapped out. I went there, checked it out myself, asked the uh, person in charge, and they uh, denied it. Can you, um, I don't know, can you get, like, some kind of, like, warrant for, like, checking it out? Try? I don't really know if I'm on active duty right now, but I could try. I don't know how this works. Um, I mean, we could also just, I don't know. We could pull a basement. We could, like, do what we did here. I kind of like that idea. I do have an invisibility spell. You could really help out. You want to do this in the you know, middle of the night? <clears throat> go in, go out, look for some things. Hopefully the kids are all right. Yeah. Also, if you just like wanted to talk to this person, I do potentially have the ability to just like make a nice little area of, you know, honesty. You can what? I can make, like, a little area where everybody will be, like, real honest. Probably. They have to have to tell the truth? Like a truth circle? Yeah. Like a little zone. <laughs> I love really come handy. I love the dancing around the names. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think we got a, a plan coming. What do you think, Zaboon? You in? I'm in. Alright, I say we do it tonight. And I, I know I say this all the time, but it, because it happens all the time where legitimately I planned like three different ways that this could possibly have started. And this conversation that you guys have just had now is making me go, oh, fuck, I didn't plan any of that. <laughs> I thought we prepped you last time. You by did. Saying like, oh, yeah, we're going to do this. Orphanage you did. Thing. And I was like, OK, I got to I can plan like four different ways. I'll do I'll do like two or three though just in case. And then with this conversation it's like, oh okay, so they're not going anywhere that I expected to go. Ah, D D. Yeah, right? Perfect. It still works though, still works. I guess do we do have a choice? Do we sneak in or do we, you know, circle of truth? I mean we could do it. Like happening. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure everyone's on board. I don't want to push anyone into anything uncomfortable. Because, <clears throat> yeah, like, if you wanted to do both, like, we can go over, like, I don't know, at, like, lunchtime and talk to people, uh, see if they'll have words with us. I can do the spell thing. And then if that fails, then, you know, we wait to the dead of night. Do the stealthy thing. Solid. That's a solid plan. I like that. All right. Yeah, I've been reading a lot of these little pamphlets. I don't even know who makes them, but I, there's like a lot of them on like how to do adventure things. I keep finding them places. I'm gonna need to read some of those. But yeah. I've just introduced zines to your universe. <laughs> <laughs> just an adventurer zine. <laughs> So are we going now? By the way, because like I'm eating lunch. Well, yeah, we can eat. We can eat first, and then we can head over. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. In real life yeah, and in game. <laughs> these these fried cheese sticks. They're great. I love them. So you guys uh, loosely plan to do what? Head over to the um, the orphanage the orphanage that you that you were just at, Arthur, with tags. Yes. Uh, it is about, I'd say, uh, a little after noon, like maybe one or two in the afternoon. Um, did you want to go right now or wait until nighttime? Uh, we can go now. We go now. Do the uh, zone of truth. That's what we get. All right. Uh, oh, actually. We're not sneaking in? Not yet. <clears throat> okay. I can do a thing, I think. This just for I can do a thing for on stream really quick. Do it. So you guys would already know this. Well, not already know this, but you guys would have uh, in real life. You guys would have this this picture that I'm about to bring up. Uh, but the the rough map of Taloncourt that I just filled the screen with apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. What did uh, you make this on, by the way? Uh, Talspire. <laughs> I I just used uh, some some weird techniques because these are all playable tiles. Like each square you see in this, if you just look at the ground that I built it on, each square is a five by five square. So it's all like you, it, you're supposed to build like other things, but I made it. I just used things like rock terrain and fence posts and stuff to make it look like it was a, I could just a really zoomed out really city. Cool. Um, awesome. It's almost like you're super creative or something. I know, right? It's weird. <laughs> uh, but if you look, you can see the capital district, the central district that's like walled off from everything else. Um. Arthur, you're, I, I, I gave uh, the players a different. Mm -hmm. You give us a circled one. Yeah. yeah, I gave you one with like plots and, and points and everything on there. Um, but inside those walls, somewhere inside those walls, doesn't really matter right now. But somewhere inside those walls uh, is where Arthur lives, and then outside those walls, but still inside that water, the the moat around the middle, um, is. Uh, a bunch of other things like for instance uh, Harmony Hotel is pressed up against the the uh, inner wall um, somewhere uh, and so is uh, the HQ because that's where a lot of like nobles would live uh, you guys would know and Arthur would know the orphanage is across the moat um, more towards the slums uh um, which is where it's so you'd have to cross one of those bridges to get there. I can uh, I can either actually you know what wait. Let me do this. Just kind of keep it there for right now. Uh, but yeah, you guys would have gone uh, to there. The, uh, the the day that uh, or the the weather today is is pretty uh, similar to what it usually is overcast cloudy a little bit foggy and and you can smell the smog in the air every time you pass by uh, some kind of factory that's spewing out black smoke um, uh, the people today uh, it doesn't seem that um, anything is different from uh, like there's no uh, chatter amongst everybody about like something that would have happened at Harmony Hotel. It doesn't seem like anybody's even noticed or cared that anything has happened. Uh, it doesn't actually seem that... You remember when you left, it didn't seem that anything had really changed at all. The outside still looked the same. Uh, it's just the, the door was able to open now. Um, but f going down the streets or, and going through the uh, the thoroughfares, you can see that uh, the, the vibe is still very much... Um, I don't want to say like solemn or sad, but you can still see all those posters hanging up. It's uh, the people, the missing persons posters are still, uh, they're kind of, their numbers are still kind of growing. Um, about, if you guys are walking, 
It's going to take about 45 minute walk to get there uh, from where you guys are right now. Um, and you remember, are you, uh, Arthur, are you telling Tig about this or are you just going to go? You guys are just going to go. So you got whoops. Okay, I guess not. Uh, you guys just head over. Um, everybody make perception checks as you stride over towards where uh, Arthur. You know you're about like a block away at this point. Perception. Oh shit! This is pretty good. Whoop. Not a great starting roll. <laughs> oh no. Nat one. Oh no. Yeah, me too. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, you just you know where you're going, so you're just kind of out of it walking there. Um What was Zaboon's again? Uh fourteen. Okay. Uh Grayson and Zaboon, as you are uh striding over, you like being led through the streets by Arthur, um You can all or you can both notice that uh the feel of this area is drastically different than that uh over the canal. The other side of the canal is very, um, while it's not like, you know, the, the, the houses are packed in and uh, it's, it's built pretty high and like not, there's rarely a, a building that's like under two stories. Um, this is all packed in too, but uh, it's very much poorer. These districts are uh, crammed in. There's a lot more homeless people on the streets. Um, you can see that the, uh, the level of cleanliness isn't the same. Uh, it's not as well taken care of. And uh, it, it kind, kind of constantly smells of low tide uh, being this close to the, the canal. As you guys uh, get closer and closer to the, um, the building that uh, Arthur has kind of told you about, uh, you can see the, the number of people like this the the number of uh, citizens i guess um grows but it grows in younger people it, it all looks like a bunch of like teenagers and and some little kids uh i think like any photo you've seen in like the 1930s newspapers of like a little little bunch of little kids with like newsies caps playing baseball in the streets and stuff uh but you all of you arrive at uh, the the building that Arthur described, the orphanage that Arthur described, uh, as you start to hear a little bit of thunder in the background. Uh, it seems that rain is in the forecast for today. What do you guys do? You're, I'd say you're about uh, 100 feet away. Um, so, uh, Arthur, how do you, how do you want to... How are we approaching this... Do you have like? We're just gonna be like, hey, let's have tea. Or... I don't really think about that. I was kind of just in the moment, like hands go. Um, anyone have any ideas? Well, I, I assume that she will recognize you. Yeah, mostly. So or we can't go with the hey, I want to adopt a kid. Yeah, it's a little. What did you do in the first time you came? Hold on, I heard some reports about missing kids. Maybe you could try again, but uh, appeal from your perspective. You've lost a daughter and you're still looking for her. Perhaps ask to see the children and, and see if maybe she's here. You forgot her memory or something. Yo, that's creepy. You're an officer, and you did lose your daughter. True. Uh, we could also be like kind of like quasi honest. Be like, uh, we are part of a organization that's helping people who have like magic. We're trying to see if there's been any like weird magic things here or like with any of the kids. So we have like a cool little magic orphanage. Oh gods, so we have like a weird little magic orphanage right now. 
Go. Well, you're right. We, you will have to tell the truth, right? Because of what you're going to do with the, the truth. Well, spell? if you're real good at it, you, you don't have to tell the truth. Like if you can fight it. But ah, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. But if you don't fight it good, then you have to tell the truth. If you like try to lie, it'll just be like, uh, and then the truth comes. So. All right. Well, let's just be straightforward. Tell the truth. <laughs> But I know that we kind of work for an organization. Okay. Try to help kids who have, you know, magic. Okay. Cool. So you guys head over uh, to the front door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the front door is swung open right now. It is, uh, since it's like three o'clock in the afternoon, um, kids are kind of just running in and out. Uh, the, the building itself is, um, it's one story, but it's a tall one story. It looks like it may have been, uh, previously a chapel. Um, and you can see, uh, the plaque on, like, right next to the front door, uh, says Second Chances. Um, it's like a, a little copper plaque, uh, that looks like it has seen better days. It's a little bit askew. It doesn't look like this place is very well taken care of, um, and there's a uh, a small. This place is still very like city like, but it's it's getting to the points where it's rural. So when you get up to the front door, uh, you can just go from the sidewalk into the front door. But there's also flanking uh, for like maybe five feet between the building and the sidewalk is a little uh, iron wrought garden fence area that looks like it's been uh, heavily overgrown for like months. Um, and then it looks like if, if you're kind of looking down the alleyway between this, this building and the building directly next to it, there's, it looks like there's possibly a uh, kind of a yard section, like a, a large garden section behind the, like it has a, like a large backyard. Um, but that also looks like there's like rakes and, uh, and gardening equipment and everything kind of just like piled up in the alleyway leading back there. Uh, this whole place doesn't look like it's been taken care of a lot. Okay, well, real quick before we go in here, guys. Why did none of us sit here and think, and talk to the kids? Huh. Good point. Well, if, if you two want to go out, um, Laboon and I could stay and talk to the children. They might be fascinated to, you know, see Zaboon. That is a real good point. You are a fascinating big guy. Terrified, but I'll do it. How do the kids look at him? Because we're close by, right? Like they can yeah, you see us. you're kind of like in you, if like if you guys are walking up to the, like you're not at the door yet, but if you're like crossing the street and walking up to the place, um, some of them take notice. Uh, some of them like whatever they're doing, whatever game they're playing in the street, some of them do stop, but like others uh, immediately yell for them to keep. Uh, to like pay attention or, or or keep doing what they're doing um it's it's a it's a weird kind of vibe if you want to i'd say if anybody wants to you can make insight checks to see how they're kind of responding to these new people i got an eight 17 15 <clears throat> zaboon you don't you're, you're not really like registering anything different it's just it kind of just feels like they're looking at you the same way a lot of other people look at you um edna and grayson though you can kind of see it looks like whenever one of the younger kids takes any kind of interest in zaboon or you guys in general this group of you walking towards the the building um immediately one of the older kids will go over to them and like shake them or, or nudge them or push them and like bring them back over into what they're doing. It's always the younger kids looking at you guys and then being kind of escorted back to their own thing by the older kids. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you guys... Now, that like, this could be, like, you know, the orphans, like, kind of sticking together kind of deal. We see that a lot back where I'm from, but, uh, like, 
maybe talk to the old ones and see if you can crack that nut. They're going to be hotter, but they, they seem to know what's up, and the little ones, uh, I don't know. They're definitely, they think you're neat. <clears throat> the older ones seem to not want them staring at us, acting weird, more excited, more like kids. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm worried they'll just run away if I try to approach them. Okay, you'll be yeah, with just me. Smile. So who's going where? Yeah, yes, I guess okay. I'll go with it to talk to the kids. Okay, so uh, oh. Zaboon and I will just walk up to some kids, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Like, we're all walking up towards the doors together, and then... I'm assuming they're like in a yard or, or the street outside of it. Yeah, they're all in the street. The yard is only about like, uh, well, the yard behind the school or like the, the school building, it looks like maybe a chapel or whatever, um, is pretty big probably, but you can really only see down the alleyway. And then the yard in front is only like five feet wide or deep. Okay. Okay. So yeah, uh, as we're walking up, I will approach the children. Uh, you guys come up to like a, a small group it looks like uh, are playing some kind of marbles-esque game maybe pogs you're not sure uh, <laughs> but they're just hunched over in a big group uh, at on the sidewalk kind of half in the street half on the sidewalk um, as you guys walk over and one of the, the older kids stands up uh, not dressed very well that like to kind of it looks like he he had uh, clothes that were hand-me-downs but has kind of grown into them but they are so old and kind of falling apart that he's he's dressed in layers um, face dirty just kind of stands up and looks what oh I, are you are, are you guys playing marbles I used to love that game when I was a kid you play <clears throat> oh yes I, I used to play quite a lot they had this I game back then of course they did. <laughs> All right. What you want? Uh, my my friends here are gonna go inside and, and talk to your headmistress. But uh, could could my friends Zaboon and I sit here and watch your game? He as soon as you say that they're gonna talk to the the headmistress, he um his his face like he rolls his eyes. His face gets really uh sarcastic almost, and he uh he he just like sits back down. Yeah, whatever. You can watch if you want. They can go talk to her if they want. Nothing we can do about it, right, boys? And they just like some of them just look up at him and nod. Some of them kind of like the Lost Boys, where they're just kind of going along whatever uh, the older kid says, uh, and they this keep kid's playing. Rufio, then. <laughs> I'm just gonna plop down right next to him and watch. It. The ground kind of Fresh. thuds. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, do their marbles bounce up a little bit? Oh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> One of the little kids, when you do that, one of the little kids like looks up in awe, and then, uh, I, like just immediately, a hand palms the back of his head and puts it down into the like kind of Snape esque, putting it back down into what he was doing, from an older kid. So for like the next, I don't know, one to two minutes, so just watch them play and, and let them get comfortable with us being there, and not immediately jump into questions. Okay. Uh, so for the next like couple minutes, what are Arthur and Grayson doing? Uh, I, th I think we're just going inside. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, as we make our way into the front door, I want to see if we can kind of make it as far through the like this place as we can. And with me like just poking my head in the rooms and looking around at things and see if there's like anything that looks clearly off and... Like, that, that shouldn't be in an orphanage. Okay. Uh, like, anything that doesn't belong in a place like this. I'd say either... This torture chamber yeah. doing in this orphanage. <laughs> Why are there skulls on this bookshelf? Uh, I'd say you can either make uh, a perception check, or if you want to, like, really test your luck and see how far you can get into the building, you can make an investigation check. Um But the first thing, when you guys walk in, the first thing you notice is it's only one step up. It's like, you know... Uh, really old buildings on the east coast where it's just like one marble step into the room into the, the house uh, 
and then the immediate like creaks and squeaks of floorboards uh this building is old um it is seen it has seen better days very much so uh but the first thing you notice is it's a long hallway with a door it's about like 60 foot hallway from where you step into uh the back uh with a closed back door with some light pouring in uh and that's it looks like that's the only kind of light is the door the light from this door and the light from the other door directly adjacent from you uh and then you can see it looks like on the left right by the door uh to the backyard it seems like uh there's a staircase that goes towards you guys but upstairs so like you'd have to go all the way down to the back of the this hallway turn left immediately to go up the steps um and then it looks like there are two other rooms uh two other doors to your right side uh both open and you can hear you can just hear things going on in this house like people moving and and people some people talking uh but what was your investigation jack uh i'm gonna be real bold and go for that uh investigation with some guidance oh shit that is a nat 20 oh and damn four on my guidance with my plus zero Jeez. that's 24 damn <laughs> okay so uh, well really quick Arthur what are you doing I'm just kind of looking around uh, probably trying to see if I see the mistri- uh, head, mistri- head mistress okay um, see like okay. again looking out for anything weird okay uh, yeah you both of you stride in um, and it doesn't seem like uh it doesn't like normally with things like this. It kind of seems like you'd be greeted immediately, right? Like someone, someone would be like, you know, hello, welcome, come in. Uh, let me show you to, to this room over here. We're watching the kids. Yeah, just or yeah, or paying attention to the children. <laughs> um, none of that is happening. Uh, you can every every time you take a step, uh, you can hear like loud thuds coming from upstairs. Uh. And then you can hear like you know, ch- like children scream, but not like a, a horrible, horrifying scream, like kids playing screaming. Um, the first room that you walk by, uh, is empty of children, but has uh, there's a, a woman inside. She is not facing you guys. It looks like she is bending over to pick things up and kind of right things and and pushing furniture back into place and fixing things on a, a fireplace. Uh. It doesn't look like she has noticed that you guys are here, uh, but Grayson, you as you walk in, you see that you see that person there, and then you start to hear uh, all of the um, the like the kids, the just the commotion that's going on from the kids. Uh, and do you, here's a weird question for Grayson, since he's a halfling, do you think he does or does not wear shoes? Oh, he doesn't. Okay. He has like like the way you drew him, where he has like the little like quasi foot wraps that are yeah yeah mostly it's just for walking long distances. So I'd say, as you are taking some steps, uh, just kind of like there's there's a a long carpet that goes the entire span, almost the entire span of this hallway, but it doesn't reach the sides of the hallway. Uh, it's like mostly a throw rug, but it's a very long throw rug. And as you kind of take a step off of that throw rug, you can feel underneath your feet a little bit of like, it feels like gravel at first. Uh, And when you, you don't really think of anything at first, but then again, you feel it again, the next step. And you look down uh, and it looks like there are little tiny pieces of possibly coal. But as you kind of reach your foot up to your waist to see what it is, it looks a lot like some kind of rat dropping. As well as like rat fur stuck to the bottom of your feet. Uh, you, you, I'd say you and Arthur both know immediately that it's like, without trying, without even making a check, it's probably from a rat. Um, and then you start to see uh, only Grayson starts to see uh, like little scratch marks on the floor, and then on the wall, and then on the doors. Uh, at first it seems a little bit haphazard, but then you start to see it, uh, you, you kind of like, you're, with a nat 20, 
uh, you can kind of trace it all the way over to the front door. And that's where it kind of ends. But that's the that's the, that's the, the the biggest thing that you find within that twenty. Uh, yeah, there's just like weird rat like scratch marks all over the place. Yeah, it's it seems like I mean this place doesn't look like it's very well maintained, but it doesn't seem like it would harbor a swarm of rats. Yeah, that's weird. Can I see if I can find like where it originates? Like, if if there like a spot where it looks like. Maybe where the rats would come from. Yeah, they, it, or it looked like anything. it looked like from the second you step into the room, you step into this hallway, you step into this house, right? It looks like it came from the front door, but you don't see anything from the front door. It just looks like they like they kind of just start appearing from the front door, and then they kind of disperse all around the house. That's at least what you can get with this natural 20 without, like, going into the room where she is. Okay. And, uh, real quick, uh, there's, like, nobody in the hallway with us, right? No, every, like, maybe, if you guys are there for, like, maybe a minute or 30 seconds, a kid will pass you. But it's, like, like maybe, like, a, a five- or six-year-old kid just kind of rushing through, trying to get outside. Never mind, I don't have it prepped. I was gonna cast the tech magic, but I don't have it prepared. There's this. Uh, <clears throat> you know what? Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something a little different in the same vein. Mm. A little weird. Uh, I'm gonna detect poison and disease mm. and see if like in this area and as I like make it quick walk up and down the hallway. I'm like, Arthur, I'm gonna just okay. take like a quick walk up and down here to see if there's, you know, anything sick or like poisonous here besides the like rat swarms. I don't know if you noticed this yet. Fucking, it looks like there was a rat nado in here. A rat nado? Yeah, like a tornado of rats or something. Or like a king rat. Have you ever seen a king rat? Like uh, a rat king? No, yes I have. They're Light horrifying. You never want to see one. If you ever see one, you will not sleep well anymore. Yeah. We had them in the basement of the bar back home. <laughs> Grayson <laughs> briefly gets this, like, <laughs> distant look. And then just, with his detect poison and disease, kind of goes down the hallway. Yeah, I'll just wait here. Uh, yeah. Arthur, you watch Grayson start... Um, just taking a few steps, like every every second or so, just taking a few steps uh, down towards the end of the hallway. Grayson, you get down to the end of the hallway. You don't sense mm -hmm. any poison or disease lingering around, except for like, you know, I think it would go off for things like that. Uh, some of the, the rat droppings are, you know, disease ridden. Mm -hmm. But you don't sense anything major hovering, okay. hovering around the house. Mm -hmm. No weird illnesses or anything. Okay, then yeah, I'll, I'll make my way back and be like, okay, well, I guess it's now or never. <laughs> just kind of like motion, like for Arthur to kick this off. Ah, uh, should, should we talk to him? I mean, I guess. No, all right, well, yeah. Um. Uh, hello. Uh, she immediately uh, the woman that actually you now see as familiar when she turns around you recognize her face uh, was the woman that you and Tig talked to she turns around like whips around uh, she looks like a, a middle aged human woman uh, hair very grey in a bun um, she's wearing it looks like a, a knitted shawl uh, that she is wearing over just regular clothes as she uh, puts down some of the, the uh, blankets and, and other kind of drapery that she was folding and she just kind of places it on an armchair uh, walks over to you. Oh, um, uh, hello again, officer. Uh, is everything all right? Uh, yeah, just, uh, come back. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what is your name again? Oh, um, let me get my Google Doc up to the thing. 
Uh, Gretchen. 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 Uh, look, I'm going to uh, be honest with you. Uh, we work for an organization that uh, helps kids who developed uh, magic abilities. And <laughs> we may have heard some things that you guys possibly had some kids that developed some type of magic. Uh, I would. I couldn't say that I know anything about that. Um, what what organization are you associated with? Good. Uh, but uh, like as he walks in the room, but uh, like before I and he as he's like talking to her, mm -hmm. uh, Grayson, I, like I want to like trail just a few feet, just enough to be like to throw the zone of truth in the room on her, and not hit us. Okay. <laughs> Does it say, so, I'm not positive, does it say that if if they succeed, they know what happened? Uh, an effective creature is aware of the spell and can miss it with answering. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they do know. Okay, so, so if they uh, succeed, they know. If they don't, they don't know? So actually, on second thought, I, I won't do it yet. I thought it was like a... Like a, like a stealth thing. I'd say Grace yeah, would know it, that. Yeah, I'd say Grace would know that. Yeah, I, I thought it was more like a charm person, and it was only afterwards. Okay, so you'll you said My you're bad. gonna wait. Yeah, I'll wait. My bad. Sorry. You're good. You're good. Uh, but she does say I I I don't know. Um, what was the name of your organization? Uh, we are the uh, Aether Syndicate. Yeah. No, I I can't say I've. I've been contacted by them. Um, well, hello, this is us, Cunt. Uh, oh, right, right. Um, and this is uh, a subdivision of, of... I'm sorry, it's just that uh, I, I don't see often uh, Ashen Core working with any other divisions. Uh, it's usually just your, your folk coming around and, and interviewing or, or investigating. Well, uh, hello. Uh, my name's Father Grayson. Uh, as you can tell by my presence as well, this is sort of a, a collaborative effort put together by the council. So I, ah. I give her a like, big smile. Right. Um, now, uh, I, we, we do, it, it's become kind of a standard protocol for us that we have to, uh, ask a few questions with you uh under oath is that okay right um sure absolutely um would you like to uh i, I i'm not um trying not to comply i would just like to know if you would like to uh have this conversation elsewhere um out of the children's earshot i i mean if you have like a personal office uh something i do it's it's that quite small it would be a cramped with all three of us but we i i do have an office uh, i look at arthur if you like the okay uh be fine perfect uh she kind of starts like not like you know running away from you guys but she just starts walking towards the door that you guys came through uh which is kind of almost immediately to the right of the front door um but she starts walking back towards the back door of the hallway <clears throat> of the hallway that you guys were in um and towards the steps, if you guys are just following her. Uh, as you guys walk up the steps, you can hear the, the noises of the kids getting louder and louder. Um, and you can hear things like, uh, no, I got you. You have to, you have to die now. Uh, and like arguments back and forth. And uh, you can see them like jumping up and down on beds. There's, it looks like there's four rooms up here. Um, three of them, when you're, when you get to the top of the steps and turn immediately to the, the, uh, mini hallway banister that can see down into the stairs uh three of them look pretty big but they are packed with bunk beds uh and then the the back room that you can see uh that you're walking towards now looks to be closed as she is getting out some keys from her uh her sleeve uh it's just it's just back here it, it uh it was a utility closet but we need somewhere to put all the files so uh, and she starts uh, fiddling with the keys and opening the door. Um, as this is happening, uh, Edna and Zaboon. It's been about two, three minutes. Uh, the game has just been going on. 
Um, none of the kids have taken any kind of solid, like, long-lasting interest in you guys. It seems like they've just kind of accepted that you're there watching right now. Uh, what do you guys do? Sorry, I was muted. I didn't realize. Oh. <laughs> um, so, after just watching a few rounds, uh, wow, you guys are really good at this. Uh, none of them answer. <laughs> uh, so, my, my friends are here inside to talk to your headmistress because of some rumors that we heard. You guys, uh, know any hot gossip? Any rumors? Make a persuasion check. Ooh. That is... 19 plus 2. The same, uh, the older kid. He's He looks maybe like 12 or 13. Uh... Kind of, he doesn't look directly up at you. He just kind of raises his head and still focuses on whatever game they're playing. Uh, as soon as you say the... Uh, have you heard any rumors? Uh, yeah, there's plenty of rumors about her. Mistress. Why? Why do you want to know? It was just... It was just really weird. Um, my friend, he said that there used to be a different headmistress, and then there was this one. Oh, yeah, and then the new one, Ada. As soon as he says that, uh, some of the little kids, like, look up really, really shocked and concerned, and some of the other, the older kids, like, push him and, and start punching him, and he's saying, why, why, no, it's true. It's true, she fucking ate her. She ate the whole thing. Gobbled her up in one bite. Are you saying... Ate her? Like she ate her? Oh yeah. And the, one of the other kids, no, it's not what happened. The other one got sick and she left. Nah, it's true. I saw her. She ate her. She gobbled her up. I was the only one awake at night. No, you weren't. And one of the other, uh, like the one of the other older kids, kind of butts in a little bit. Nah, it's not true. The other one got sick, and now this. I was always told not to say mean words, but this lady came in and she's not the best is she nice to you guys at least she mainly ignores us yeah, but we, and then the other one that you were talking to first uh, kind of like butts into this yeah but we can take any of the food we want out of the fridge can't we <laughs> yeah I guess that means you guys have free run huh Oh yeah, we the doors are never locked anymore. We come in and out whenever we want. I don't got a curfew anymore. Wow, are are kids still going missing too? Or as soon as you say that, all of them kind of they don't like shut up immediately, but they all kind of get a little bit quiet. Nah. We, we see what we heard is is you know a lot of kids were running away from here, so we wanted to come and check it out and. You know, just make sure that everybody's following the law, you know? The last one that ran away was Jeremy, but he... They said he ran away. He didn't say... He didn't want it to run away. He didn't... He liked it here. But they said... They said Jeremy ran away. She said that. Uh, this new one or the old mistress? The new one. We just want to make sure that, you know, she's following the laws and not beating on any of you. <laughs> no, we beat back on her. We, she don't, she, no one around here follows the laws. Not even those, the red, red coats. They don't come around here for nothing. He's the first one I saw in months. Well, this issue is a little personal for him. Uh, you, you, you guys know when the magic came back and everything got a little crazy? Yeah, Jeremy had a little bit of it. He could do sparks at his fingers. Oh, uh, like this, and then I'll do dancing lights. Oh, she could do it too. Look, boys, boys, look! And all the little kids start looking up at her. Like, and then uh, it seems like, for a moment, all of the like every one of the kids in that little like huddled uh, group 
and then some of them that are just kind of playing out on the distance notice what you're doing take interest and then about like a second later some of them start like nudging the other ones and and they all go back to their like nonchalant don't care kind of attitude i i guess that's pretty cool it's, uh, you know i have i've been seeing a lot of it recently so it's not that big of a deal but you, you did a pretty good job oh thank you dear uh you know i got this power from reading books actually Let's see some people <laughs> reading book magic yeah she got it from reading books you see, some people are born with magic, and sometimes, if you study really hard, you can learn magic. Yeah, all right. I'll get read it. I'll get some some book magic, and then uh, Tyler over there can get the toilet magic, right? Because you can you can do this stuff from toilets too. And then uh, I know my uncle used to do log magic until he died. Uh, there is definitely several types. Some of it is really cool, though. Uh, do you have anybody else here that can do magic, like Jeremy? Nah, it was just Jeremy. Uh, well, do you guys have a, a telephone here? Yeah, <laughs> no, nah, we don't. We don't got nothing fancy like that. Well, I'm gonna give you a card, uh, and just on this card, I'm or piece of paper that I'm gonna rip. Uh, I'm gonna put down. Uh, our phone number really quick and then uh, I'll put the address too actually since they don't have a telephone number you uh when you hand uh, him this he uh wait. He look oh, go ahead I say as I'm handing it over I'm say okay I have a secret Can you guys keep his a secret he he like kind of leans in uh sh yeah sure yeah no what we have is a school where kids can come if they know magic. And what we do is teach them how to control their magic. Or, you know, uh, it's it's pretty new. We just brought on another kid, actually. So, you, you seem pretty tough. You seem like you're in charge around here. If any kids here come up with more magic, or even if you don't have magic and, and this new headmistress just you know, goes mad or goes crazy or something. I want you guys to be able to come here if you need help. As you're handing him this, uh, he turns around, uh, like his, his demeanor kind of changes abruptly where he stands up straight, kind of takes this from you. Um, he looks at it for a second and turns back down to one of the little kids and hands it to them. Give this to Maggie. She can read. Uh, and then... He like he he looks at you for a second and then looks back at the doorway that he came through that uh, your friends went through, and then walks over to you kind of like really close, and like motions to to bend down so he can whisper. He's probably not that much shorter than me. <laughs> no, yeah, not much. Like but, maybe a foot. But yeah, I bend down. Uh, and you hear him whisper in your ear. She didn't. She didn't actually eat the old mistress. That was a fib. But. I'd be careful around her because I do see her talking to the rats. And then he leans away and then goes back into uh, playing the game that he was playing. Uh, I'll try and, and catch his eye as he's going back and, and wink at him. He just nods as he's get, like kneeling back down. I think they're all playing games now again, right? Like nobody still has... Yeah, you can hear the, like, just the chaos in the streets of kids playing outside okay uh i guess i don't know well Z zaboon do you want to hang out a bit longer or would you like to go in and find our friends uh i think we should probably go find our friends now yep i, I think that sounds good all right fellas thank you so much for entertaining us um yeah that was wh what interesting game you guys got there they just what all are they actually playing it looks like marbles it looks like they're playing marbles uh, uh is the kid that was talking to me is he actually playing currently no he looks like he, most of them are just watching it's almost almost like you know beyblades where they're most of them are just crowded around and two of them are playing at the same time uh i just want to send mage hand in and like 
push one of the marbles to the other. You, you just hear an eruption of, ah, what do you mean? As just chaos. <laughs> and just laugh as we walk back to, the, or walk into the orphanage. Uh, you guys <laughs> start walking into the, the house. Um, meanwhile, while all that was happening, Grayson and Arthur, uh, Gretchen uh, unlocks the door and opens it up and you can see uh, it is pretty small like it's barely big enough for this desk it looks like um, she kind of has to wiggle her way between the desk and the wall to get behind the desk um, but you can see the desk is, is riddled with boxes and, and papers and uh, it looks like files and there's one shelf in this entire room that looks like it is just holding literally every file and folder that exists in this building um, and you guys when you walk in with her behind this small desk you guys are like shoulder to shoulder or shoulder to waist, depending on how tall either of you are. Uh, but uh, she like motions for one of you to close the door behind you. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I will close it. And as I do, uh, can I take a quick like peek around the room uh, just to see if there's anything, any weird like markings or anything? As yeah, you can uh, make a, I'd say make a perception check. 15 15 you don't see anything out of the ordinary there's one small window uh behind her desk but it's like it's one of those uh like you know the bathroom windows where it's kind of high up and it's small mm -hmm. it's like that and it looks to be uh it's there's the latch over for where it's locked um okay. and it looks like there's uh the only thing that you notice with a 15 is like there's a little bit of like markings like it, rain probably got through it and kind of bowed the wood a little bit underneath, but that's about it. Okay. Uh, she sits down behind her desk and there's, uh, there are two stools in here um, and she motions for each of you to sit down. Uh, and if, if you'd like to sit down, you, you can. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, yeah, so uh, like we was saying, um, they're going to be uh, kind of under oath. So, um, right. I don't know if, if you have like a deity or something in particular that you believe in, uh, just, uh, you know, you have to solemnly swear uh, on them or just, you know, on like the institution that is the city. Oh, wow. You, you will tell the truth. You have a very, uh, very... S -s surreal circumstances here then a little bit and uh, as I'm saying that I, I will cast uh, uh, like start casting uh, zone of truth so uh, you know, it's a minute I think right uh, is it a minute no it's an action is it an action uh, yeah so I'll be like uh, so you know say like I Gretchen solemnly swear and then you know insert whatever deity you want and that you will uh, tell the truth here. Right. Um, I, I, I don't um, I don't particularly serve any... Oh, then you can just swear. You know, uh, on the right. Laws of the uh, I, I, Gretchen, do swear by uh, the laws of Talon Court, I guess, um, that I will be as truthful as possible. Okay. And as, as she says that, I cast spell. Okay. Uh, so you two also need to make a save, unless you're yep. both just letting it happen. Uh, I'll try to make the save. <clears throat> oh, what kind of save again? Uh, not Zaboon and Edna don't need to. You're not in the room yet. Oh, oh right. Yeah, they're they're upstairs. Uh, I won't Correct. say how low the number was, but Scott, she does not pass. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a uh, fourteen charisma. Yeah, charisma? Definitely not. I met it. Nine plus five. Ooh. Uh, so you feel her fail. Okay. I think that's part of the spell. You know if they pass or fail, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, now that, uh, you know, we all believe this. Um, Arthur, do you want to start with the questions? I feel like you're a little more experienced yeah. in this field. Let's uh, start with an easy one. What happened to the uh, last head mistress? Oh, sorry, that was a burp. She says that. Sorry, that was a burp. Um... <laughs> She was, uh, she was relieved of her duty. Uh, for what reason? 
I wasn't given a reason. I was only told to take over. Okay. <clears throat> Makes sense. It, uh, it is... I'm assuming it's very hush-hush since I wasn't told and I was also told uh, not to mention her. Hmm. So you know, the first time I came here, you did lie to me. I hope you know that. I did, in fact. Yes. Why did you lie to me? I, I wasn't given... Uh, how should I put this? I wasn't given the option to uh, to discuss her leaving in her terms of leave. Okay. Who ordered that? I'm not sure. I was just given this job by my superior. And who are they? Who do you work for? What's the organization? You can see her uh, begin to... Like, it, it, she, she pauses for a moment. Truthfully, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. Okay, um... Well, uh... You are under oath, and you are now willingly withholding important information for a investigation headed by the Council of Talon Court via the Aether Syndicate. So I, I hope you understand that if you... Do not if, if you are not as completely transparent with us as you know, far as all your knowledge goes, then this will get escalated much further very quickly. She kind of she has like this I wouldn't say confident, but she has this nonchalant look on her face. Uh almost like I mean you've seen uh people Grayson, I mean, you've seen people like kind of go catatonic uh, mm-hmm. she, it's kind of like that but not in a bad way where she's just kind of very well then alright as long as you understand um well uh, I guess next question is uh, h- have any of the orphans here now or ever showed any uh, arcane or magical abilities or any strange powers of any sort None that I've witnessed. Uh, I, I don't want to know about what you witnessed. I want to know to your knowledge. To my that knowledge. You've been told or otherwise. To, I haven't been told about any, no. To your knowledge. So you have not known that any children. You do not. Let me phrase this very specifically. Uh, no children here have ever demonstrated any magical or arcane knowledge uh, as far as you know. Yes or no? She, again, she pauses. And then you can kind of, you... Since she, how long does the spell last? I think it's like 10, 10 minutes, minutes, right? Yeah. You you can feel her, the same feeling that uh, she did immediately to try and resist. You can feel her trying to resist now. And then she says, "Yes." So that they okay. So that there have been kids with magic here. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> this is a big. This is really just a me thing. Um, what's the deal with all the, the, the rats? That that has to be a health cold thing. Uh, she kind of, I'd say, uh, both of both you and Arthur can make uh, a perception check. Perception or insight? Perception. Okay. Uh, twelve. Fourteen. Uh, both of you see, uh, just since you're you're staring right at her at this moment, um, both of you see her eyes get wide for like a split second and then go back to normal. Um, we do seem to have a rodent problem. Mm-hmm. If you would like, I could call an exterminator. I mean, it, we we could actually probably handle that pretty quick. If, if uh, you could show us the source of it, if there's like a rat nest, I, I actually used to deal with that back home. 
pretty often. We live, Father Grayson, in the not so established part of the city. It is the rat nest. <laughs> uh, I, 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 okay, I get it. Um, are there uh, well, any other questions for you? Let's see. So you know nothing of this kid going missing? Uh, what what child do you speak of? I'm I'm terribly sorry, but yes. it has become quite commonplace. Uh, children from the orphanage. What do you know about the ones that went missing? Again, you feel that like tug of her trying to resist, uh, but not as strong this time. I only know of one. And where are they now? I That I don't know. And who took them? That I also don't know. Okay. But your employers did. I'm, I'm not aware of what my employers know or don't know. What, your employers took the kids? Or they know? To my knowledge, they did not take anyone. Okay. That's good. And this child had magic. The one who vanished? Yeah. I was never told this. But you know this. I, I was never told. I was never witness. I never witnessed this. I, I don't know for sure if they did or didn't. Okay. That's good. Um. You can both actually see her start to sweat a little bit now. Uh. I'm going to add, what, what, what was your, what's your name again? Sorry. Gretchen. Gretchen Holt. Okay. And, uh, Gretchen, do you, uh, have any ill intentions towards your wards here? She, for the, like, the first time this one is, uh, almost completely, like, given up like she she not given up but like she completely complies with the spell for this one uh, and she looks you straight in the eye and says I have no in- ill intent for these children <clears throat> hmm try it. can can I insight like read is like there any like other like I know she's telling the truth but is it like yeah, I'd say twisting. yeah. You can you can make an insight check, uh, seeing if she's using the truth to to say something else. So like uh, yeah, tr- uh, yeah, or like obfuscate uh, eighteen. Uh, you don't actually get anything, um, anything like ill intent or or anything like that. Like nothing bad. You don't get any kind of uh, secondary emotion from her it's it seems like whatever she just said is is very true are you able to contact your employers uh they contact me how it's different every time What's the most common means? Notes. Handwritten. And who brings them? Messengers. Who would those messages be? Whoever they deem worthy of bringing the message that day. They're always That's different. Specifically, it's, you know, is it a specific person, specific group of people? They're always it's different. A person have any of the notes I'm always directed to burn them after reading that's very suspicious of course I can I can voluntarily give you one bit of information and that is that I have never seen directly face to face my employer so if this is what you're after then I'm very sorry Tell me what the last letter you received said. 
I couldn't remember it if I if I tried. Well, I uh, I believe a uh, questioning time is actually running to an end. So, wretched, I, I just want to let you know one thing before we, uh, you know, begin to head out here. Whoever was here last time, based on uh, the little bits that I could surmise of that, that you know, things are kind of off, you know, two people missing, and secret notes passed through an orphanage, you being very uh, unwilling to cooperate with us here. Just keep in mind that the, the last person that was here running this establishment does is probably not around anymore just because somebody asked the question. So if there's anything that can jog, you know, jogs in your memory that you think could actually help us figure out who your employers are and what's really going on here, this is probably your best and potentially last chance to tell us because the next time we drop in I kind of doubt it's going to be you in charge of this place Father Grayson I'm very well aware of what the possibilities are for the fate of the previous owner and I'm assuming they're not great Probably not. Well, I hope you enjoy following suit. I like, tap the desk. And I will uh, stand up and as I'm kind of like waddling to the door to open and light my cigarette. I just kind of like chill and wait in case Arthur has stuff he wants to say. Nope, I'm just going to kind of lock eyes with her and just walk out with her. She, at this point, she's sweating very heavily. Um, and she kind of like guides you both out of the the office um, as she closes the door behind both of you. Uh, she stays inside, and you can hear it lock. Uh, you guys hear downstairs uh, some very heavy footsteps walking into the, the house. Uh, I'm gonna hang to like just out, like go like a few steps down the hallway, and like smoke my cigarette and just listen. See if I can hear her talking in the room at all. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, there's a, a window um, right by where the door was. Um, I'd say make a... Guys. <laughs> make a uh, perception check with disadvantage since it's behind a door. Um, Edna and Zaboon, you guys are walking in now. Uh, you don't see anybody downstairs. I am going to use a DM inspiration I have had forever. Since the beginning, right? Like towards like the first second or second session, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's gonna be 11, 16? 16. Um, you don't hear anything, you don't hear any. I mean, you hear a little bit of movement, like drawers opening and closing. You don't hear anything like no talking, okay. Arthur. Uh, but Edna and Zaboon, you walk in. Ouch. No one downstairs. Oh no, is Edna muted again? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so there is no kids around? No, there's... I mean, sometimes you can, you can, like... While you guys were out there, you could see them running in and out of the house, and they still do the same thing when you guys walk in. Uh, one of them just runs out of the house, front, like down the stairs and, and out of the house. Uh, but none of them are staying inside. As he starts to run by, or as the kid starts to run by, Hey, excuse me, um, uh, wait, did I catch the name of the kid that I was talking to? You didn't. Shoot. Uh, you, your friend over there mentioned that there's a, a rat problem. Do you know where they come from? Uh, the little kid stops. He looks pretty young. The rats... 
Yeah, have, where, have you seen the rats around? Or, oh, or yeah, all they... over. They're all the time in the ice boxes and the food. They're all over the place. Don't don't sit on the furniture, though, because sometimes they live in the couches. Oh, dear. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to go look around for rats. <laughs> okay. Uh, he just darts outside. Uh, make an investigation check. I'm looking for holes in the walls, under furniture, maybe... All that stuff. Uh, investigation? Mm-hmm. 16. With the 16, you, you notice... Um, Zaboon kind of, like, kicked up a part of the, the rug when you, when you walked in. Uh, and you notice that there were tiny little claw marks uh, right by the front door. And then they kind of disperse. You're not sure where they go after that. Uh, but you do see kind of just randomly spotted throughout the house in the hallways and stuff uh like not heavy amounts of it but like little little rat droppings you do see them uh looking along the, the walls do i see any like holes like tom and jerry style or anything no but you do see um the same kind of like if you were to because you're, you're kind of like walking through the house right mm -hmm. uh you do see uh the same kind of scratch marks uh by one of the windows but it's it's with a uh, a broken corner and then again you can't really see where you can't tell where they go you can just see the scratch marks there uh, I wonder if they have a basement or something I'd, I'd love to try and take care of some of these so they're not around the children I'm talking to Zaboon not, not myself this time <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, what do you think we should do I know back in my town, we used to post boards, uh, you know, for people to come in and exterminate rats. This is a, a pretty large city, though. I wonder if we could call an exterminator for them. I'm still kind of looking around, uh, maybe trying to find the kitchen. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the kitchen is uh, just past the uh, the second door, or the first door. It's like, the kitchen is the second door on the right when you come in the house. Uh, it's small. Uh, the flooring is kind of coming up a little bit, but it doesn't look like, uh, th looking through still, it doesn't look like uh, the same scratch marks are on the floor of the kitchen where, like, the holes are. It just kind of looks like the holes, very small holes, but holes nonetheless kind of just go into the dirt underneath the house. Um, and it doesn't look like there's a, a cellar anywhere or a basement. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I was hoping for would be in the kitchen, too. For some reason, there's always basement doors in kitchens. <laughs> Uh, I guess I just give up. I don't know. <laughs> just kind of keep looking around un until we hear our friends or find our friends. Sounds good. So what are you two, Arthur and Grayson, doing upstairs? Uh, I think we're just headed to meet up with everybody, yeah? Yeah, well, probably walking down the stairs. <laughs> we'll see Edna on her hands and knees looking for rat holes. <laughs> um, I'm going to be good. Did you, like, lose the contact? Oh, what was that, Zaboon? Can I try to sniff out any rat holes? <laughs> <laughs> you, wait, yeah, you get advantage on perception with smell, right? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Make a, make a perception check with advantage. Ooh, smell them rats. 25. Oh. Elephants are scared of mice. That's true. That's, that's true. <laughs> um, that's also true. Uh, nat 20? Yeah, 25 total. Um, you start, <laughs> you start sniffing around as, uh, as Arthur and Grayson are coming downstairs. Um, you can definitely smell some, some, uh, recent rats around the, uh, the cooler where it looks like a lot of the food is kept. Um, and as Grayson and, and Arthur walk in, you can kind of smell it on them a little bit. Uh, but a very strong scent catches your, your nose directly above you. Like you just start sniffing the walls and, and uh, the molding around the floor, but then it gets higher and higher. And like almost directly above you, you can smell, like it smells like there's probably uh, either one big or multiple rats above you. Oh, possibly in the ceiling. Uh, is there, there is a second floor, right? There, Yeah, there is a second floor. Do I know what room is directly above me? Uh, you, you wouldn't. You haven't been up there. 
Did we uh, meet up yet? What kind of ceiling? Yeah, you guys would have just walked downstairs. Um, is it like an exposed ceiling or, or like um? No, it's like uh, regular, you know, stucco, plastered ceiling. Why are you guys just like hanging out in the kitchen? Well, yeah, you guys one of right? the boys outside said there's a bad rat problem here. I'm, I'm just trying to see where oh, they are. Oh yeah, there, there's like scratches all over. It looks like there was like a, I don't know, like a hurricane of rats. Or something in here, like it's everywhere. She how, said how that she talks to them. What? I know. The uh, the ceiling in here, Zaboon, is only about like nine feet tall. You know what? I'm just gonna, and I'm going to uh, do my detect magic at will for today. Uh, thirty feet, right? Yes. You don't get anything except your friends and and yourself. Yeah. If I hold you up to the ceiling, do you think you'd be able to listen for the rats? I could certainly try. <laughs> Guidance. <laughs> <laughs> make, a, make a perception check. As, as Zaboon's kind of just pressing you up against the ceiling. Uh, and what do I... What's Guidance? A d4? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh... Perception? Or investigation? Yeah, perception. Percep okay, so that is a 15, then plus the 2 on my d4, so 17. This is like this is like when, when there's a, a moth in your kitchen and you grab your cat and just start holding it up to the, the ceiling. <laughs> oh my god, I've never thought of that before. <laughs> uh, 17, you, hear, you do hear footsteps like almost directly above you, like someone is in a room directly above you, uh, and some shuffling. Uh, but, but you you don't hear like claws. Were you were you guys just upstairs? Yeah. What's in this room right here? And I, I kind of tap the ceiling above me. Uh, I hear footsteps. Um, Zaboon smells rats. Probably the headmistress. It looks like it would be it would match up pretty well. Uh, now that I'm next to the ceiling, <laughs> is there any magic I feel? Nope. Still, yeah, sphere? yeah. Still, still no. With the um, the raised or elevated thirty foot sphere now. Uh, well, it, I don't feel any magic coming from there. I mean, we can do like a quick loop of this place. It seems to kind of be chaos. Yeah. Uh, I I don't feel a basement. I I couldn't find a basement. It doesn't seem to be one. We can go back upstairs, to Boone, if you. We can handle yeah, this rat problem, I guess. Yeah, it might be easier to get in through the floors from up there. You say you smelled a lot of them? Like, yeah, it smelled pretty bad. I guess help the kids while we're here, right? Yeah, one of them, the ones that ran by, so they gets in the food, they're in the furniture. Alright, let's take care of some rats. Actually, uh, Zaboon, you had a nat 20, right? That was what that was what did it. Uh, yeah. The scent, as you guys are talking, the scent, uh, I'd say because you got a nat 20, is no longer above you. And it's actually coming very strong from the slightly, the cracked window. Not like cracked as in broken, but like slightly open. Uh, partially ajar window in this kitchen that, le that looks out into the, the garden. I'm going to head over to the window and look out. Uh, make make a perception check regular, just with your with your elephant eyes. I assume I was put down. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, no, he's still just holding you up to the roof, just dragging you <laughs> along the ceiling. Uh, I got a seven. It's this this whole yard. There's a giant uh, tree weed. It looks like it started off as a weed and then became a tree. Uh, but it's all gated off with wrought iron fences, and it's, it looks like it's overgrown. Nobody's cut, nobody's mowed this lawn in forever. You don't really see anything. But the smells coming from out there, right? Yeah. Hey guys, I can't... Yeah, I can't see anything, but there's a really strong smell coming from out that window. What did you say, Arthur? Should I... I should let Gretchen know that we can take care of the problem. Maybe. Uh, have we actually seen any of the rats? Or just all their... Not yet. Marks? 
So I think I, I think Grayson's like annoyed with the rat thing because rats definitely would have bothered the hell out of him back home as a kid. Common thing. Like I mean, we we, we all know what part of Philly we grew up in. Is the backyard big? Like sizable? It looks like it's about fifteen by forty. That's that's pretty big. Yeah, there's a good These... there's a good size. That they have this huge backyard back here, and then the kids are out and playing in the street. There's gotta be... Check out the backyard. I mean, he says the smell's now coming from here. Alright, let me go upstairs. I'll check on Gretchen let her know that. Ask her if she has uh, a scythe for the weeds. Say so, okay, scythe for the weeds. Gotcha. I'll head back upstairs. Uh, as you're, you're walking upstairs, uh, you actually hear the door... Uh, shut, and you can hear it lock, and then you, you reach the top of the steps, and you can see her coming out of the um, the office. Oh, officer, um, I, th- I thought you had gone. Um, I was heading out, but uh, more of my colleagues showed up, and we actually have someone that can kind of, good sense of smell, and he got a whiff of your, uh, possible big rat problem, so uh, oh, uh, we thought we'd stick around and help you take care of it. Perfect. Uh, yes. Um, if, if you would like, I mean, I it's not your job. I could also, I could always call an exterminator. No, it's fair. It's fine. Uh, you wouldn't have a scythe, would you? Take care of some weeds in the garden? Um, we do. <laughs> if if you'd like to, to search for it in the, uh, it's not really a, a shed, but it's a, it's a covered, uh, the alleyway next to our house. Mm-hmm. You could, you could dig through. There's rakes and, and, and I, I know there's at least two sides there. Appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, we'll be uh, this will be done pretty quickly. She just nods, doesn't say anything, just nods, uh, and like just kind of starts walking with you downstairs. Uh, hey guys, this is uh, the Mister Headmistress uh, Gretchen. Oh, hello, she dear. Runs the place. She just waves at everybody and, and gives a nod and, well, I um, I should continue straightening this place up. Uh, it was very, very nice meeting all of you, officer, father. And she goes into the uh, the first room that you can walk into, like the lounge area where she was when you first came in. I know there's scythes side, side outside. Uh, side in the oh. alleyway. You know what? I, I think we did catch a glimpse of that coming up. Uh, I'll head over there. All right. Uh, should we just go out back and start looking, or? I mean, I guess. <laughs> the, right. I'm just like looking for rats. And Spoon, follow spotting. your nose. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna try to sniff them out. Uh, I'd say make a since it's a different thing. Make another perception check with advantage. Um, Edna, while they're doing that, you just you go over to the alleyway. Uh, it looks like a a jungle of sticks and handles. Uh, it looks like all of this stuff hasn't been touched in years. There are cobwebs, there's dust, there's like piles of leaves that cover half of it. Um, but you do see, since you know what you're looking for, and you've, you've looked down this alleyway before, it's in like the center of the alleyway, so like in the middle of the house, you have to kind of just like trudge through junk and buckets and stuff like that that lead up to it. Um... You do see just a, a, a scythe sitting up against the house that you could grab. Getting it. Uh, I'm going to head to the backyard and then I'm going to use Mage Hand <laughs> while I stand there. And Mage Hand is just going to start swiping. Uh, and the, uh, you guys, as you guys get out into the yard, you guys watch Edna struggle to like clink and clang the scythe through the alleyway as it like gets stuck a couple times and like it. it it's really awkward to handle as the the head is kind of loose, so it spins and it just gets stuck in the alleyway a little bit. As she comes out, uh, all of you are in in this this garden, very overgrown. The grass is no shorter than your like. There's no point where this grass is shorter than your your knees. Uh, but the the mage hand begins to to do its job. Just swing, swing. Uh, Zubin, what was your check? 21. 21, goddamn. Hmm. Uh, with a 21 and with uh, the the scythe doing what it's doing, um, everybody make investigation checks with advantage. 
Uh, Zaboon, the it, smell it, is no still sense. coming from back here, but it's faint. Arcadice, don't um, fail me now. I got an 11. 19. I, I rolled two fours. Oh. oh. I, I, have a, I have a plus six to investigation, though, so. 10! <laughs> what was Grayson's? 19. Uh, you don't find anything of interest back here. There is, uh, it looks like, uh, very, uh, very nicely carved, uh, statue of, like, an angel that looks like it was part of a fountain at one point, um, but it's broken off and just kind of hidden in the muck and weeds. Uh, you do find a, a pair of old boots that you're, you're uncovering just as you're, you're cutting through all this, this grass and weeds. Uh, you also find an old, it looks like an old doghouse. Uh, that has been completely overgrown. But Grayson, you actually find uh, a a little... It looks like a, a... It could be gold. But where you are, probably maybe not. Uh, but it looks like a, a little stopwatch, like a, a pocket watch. Oh, uh, look. Uh, that, that, that is neat. Uh, is it working? It's not. The The face is cracked, and it looks like it's stopped. Uh, I cast mending on it. The, the glass pane just immediately goes back to what it was. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't look like it's ticking or anything. Yeah, is, is there like anything like on it? Uh, have like an engraving? Like if it's somebody's, it be like it's like a locket style one. It's the details. It does. Uh, it has it has a, a name on the inside. Uh, it is engraved. It looks like it was from a man named Philip uh, to a woman named Magda. And uh, it just has a date written on it, which looks like the date is uh, about 50 years ago. Cool. Uh, but Zaboon, you also, you can still tell that the, the scent is coming from uh, more now more towards the back of this yard. I'm just gonna keep following the snow. You you keep following it up until the point where you reach uh, the back of another small like the the gardens on the other side where the the fence stop like separates it are actually smaller, but it looks like the houses are about three stories on the other side. So like you know butt neighbors, where the backs of your houses meet up, uh, but it, it smells like it's coming from over there. In, from inside one of the houses? Or, or just on the other side of the gate. I'm going to um, peek over the gate and uh, see what I find. This this house immediately, you guys can all tell, uh, looks like it takes better care of its garden. Uh, it's not well maintained, but it looks like it's mostly just uh, stone and concrete uh, with a little bench that leads directly onto, uh, or directly into the back door of the house. walk up to the back door of the house and see what I can smell. Uh, so do, you, do you climb the gate over, like you climb over the gate that's separating it? Yeah. Open you guys watch, you guys watch the moon just kind of like, actually it's it's not that hard for him. He's very tall and the gate's only about like three and a half feet tall. Oh, I can just step over it. Yeah, you could probably just kind of like straddle for a second and go over. It does kind of bend a little bit. It is, it's still, I mean, yes, it's iron, but Zaboon is Zaboon. Uh, you guys just watch him go over and start walking towards. Uh, it smells like it's coming from the inside of this house. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna look through the windows there, see if I can see if there's anybody in there, like lights or anything. Make a perception check, as you guys, you three, are just kind of watching him go over to this other house. Uh, nineteen. Ooh. Uh, the the it looks like the window isn't like covered with a uh, a curtain or anything. You do look in. Um, you can see it looks like uh, nobody is. In the room, this it looks like it leads directly to a, a small kitchen. Nobody's in this kitchen, uh, and it looks like the rest of the lights are off on, like down on this first floor. And the smell, you said the smell's coming strongly from inside. Uh, at this point, it's not strong anymore, but it, it was strong when you came over here. Hmm. Um, uh, I'm gonna knock on the door. 
You knock. Mm-hmm. A moment passes. Nothing. No one answers. Hey, uh, Zabun, are you still smelling the like the the, the rats? And you still keep following it? I did get a strong scent over here, but it seems to be gone now. I mean, is it like moving? Can you keep following it? And you know, I'm feeling it. And, um, you do get. Can you help me with the fence? You do get the sense that it was moving. Uh, where is it heading towards? It smelled like it just went into that house, and then you're not sure about after that. Yeah, it seems like uh, he's in the house here. Does somebody want to maybe come with me? I just knocked on the door. Nobody yeah, I just need, like, I'm a little s- small. Yeah, I need a hand. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll come too. It's me. Edna, you need help? Uh, call if you need me, dear. I'm just going to clear out the rest of this yard for the children. <laughs> Edna's not even looking at you guys. She's just... <laughs> Swinging back Yell and forth. If you the need side. Anything. They're playing in the street, for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys go. You just hop the gate. Yep. Okay. Yep. I guide myself to help me hop the gate. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you can make it. Make an athletics check, really quick. Oh God, I needed that. Uh, a five plus a four plus a one, so ten. <laughs> it, you do that thing. It's it's the kind of wrought iron fence where it spikes. So like you do that thing where you try to you put your foot between a little bit of a, uh, one of the spikes and then you you put your other foot, but you're kind of like balancing now, so you get a little shaky and you stop. And it takes you like a good like thirty seconds to get over this thing without trying to get caught on it. <laughs> and Arthur and Zaboon just watch you. Okay, okay, yeah. I got it. The, uh, the cardio is really helping. I think that was both. Okay, well, I'm a god. <laughs> I will uh, toss up the guidance for whatever he does next. Okay. So, uh, what were you doing again? Um, once everybody gets here, I'm gonna um, try to open the door. Uh, it does seem to be locked, like the first try. Uh, I'm going to try one of the windows. The window does also seem to be locked. Hmm. Like, <laughs> you watch, like, Grayson, like, look at his, like, signet of Torb, and then at his belt where he currently has his thieves tools. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try opening any of these up? Uh... I mean, do you want to give it, like, another smell and see if you can, you like, if they're still in the building? Yeah, I'm going to um, smell uh, under the crack of the door. Okay, yeah, make another perception check with advantage. All right. And you got it. Oh, my God. Another net 20. I'm not even oh, close. shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> 25. And, and you get guidance on that. So that's Don't even high up. Oh, no, you said <laughs> yeah, D4. Yeah, D4. I don't think it, don't think it matters. No, it does. Do it. <laughs> it matters. Uh, oh my god. 29. 20, 29. <laughs> one, that's, hey guys, that's one away from the max. Um, you So with the 29, uh, normally you would not, at this point, you would not be able to smell anything. But for some reason, you can, it's like the, the weirdest instance of a breeze from the other side of the house blows in just enough of this whiff to know that there's not th- th- whatever is giving off that smell is not in the house anymore but it's probably on the other side of the house hmm. like it's passing through the house and going somewhere else. yeah um, uh, is it a, it's a single building or is it attached to another one you would remember that this is kind of like kind of like you know city blocks where it's row homes oh shit um how quickly do you think we'd be able to get around the other side of the house uh to the exact opposite side Maybe, uh, depending on if you just did it right and went through back through the the orphanage and just kind of went around, like two minutes. Two minutes. We did it like just hopping fences, hot fun style. Maybe we should try flanking it. Uh, if we go around the other side, how long would it take for us to meet back up? If we each went a different way. Uh, it depends. So you could either go back through the orphanage, which would take about you go back through the orphanage and then loop around. The orphanage is not on the corner, but it's kind of close to the corners. So it would take about two minutes to get around and back in front of this house that you guys are smelling at. Uh, or 
you could do the the hopping gates thing uh which would take about like i don't know depending on how good you can hop fences uh like a minute because you can see the the street from where you are it's just you're like three or four yards deep these small ones come with me i could probably just carry over the fence it'd be faster that's fair <laughs> i will just like go, go run for like zavoon to like carry me <laughs> all right and i guess arthur and edna can um go on the other side gonna get uh zavoon a uh, backpack so i can be like yoda <laughs> So you guys, I, I'm not even going to make Zaboon make a check uh, to go over the fences. Um, but you guys, uh, Zaboon and, and Grayson start hopping fences towards the uh, the side street. Uh, Arthur, you and Edna, do, do you just, since you see Zaboon start hopping fences, what do you do? Uh, I am going to, it's a three and a half foot roll iron fence, right? So I'm going to put myself next to it still having the scythe go but keeping an eye on the back door in case it comes back through um and that's where i'll be <laughs> okay so so like in case it comes back this way and also i'm still clearing the yard <laughs> okay arthur what about you i will follow edna i'm not going anywhere oh. <laughs> didn't you hear what i said yeah she's, so she's just staying in the in the, the i'm staying the in thing. the yard i'm gonna watch the back in case it stays or comes back like towards us i'll um, stay here hop- just in case okay they were hopping fences to go around the front in case you missed that part you were switching uh so i'd say since uh arthur and, and edna are gonna like keep eyes on the back door that you guys were just smelling at right uh Grayson and Zaboon, you would reach the street. I'd say make a uh, make a perception check. Guidance. <laughs> this time, either Zaboon, you could use your nose if you want to use your nose. That's advantage. Um, Grayson, yours is just regular. Okay. Twenty-four for Zaboon. Twenty-one. Oh damn, both of you. Uh, with Gr- Grayson kind of on Zaboon's back, uh, kind of like a freak the mighty situation where you guys are just kind of hopping fence over fence over fence. You get to the street, um, you get onto the the street and like uh, near the corner, uh, but the opposite corner of where this this house is. Um, both of you are looking around. There's people walking. Uh, you can see. You can hear like the the clipping and clopping of, of horses, drawing carriages. The, this part of the the city doesn't have uh, automobiles, really, that that often. It's, this is all still uh, horse carriages and stuff. Um, and the, the people who are walking around, it's busy, but it's not, you know, uh, inner city busy. It's it's people are, are just kind of hanging about and, and milling around, just kind of being, and, and lazily just kind of existing. Uh, but both of you can kind of zero in, Zaboon on the smell, and Grayson, something has been itching at you about these rats. When both of you see a, a larger than normal big black rat, uh, the reason it sticks out to both of you, and it's not like, oh, that's just a, a, a small cat or a small dog, is that it looks like it has something tied to its back. And you can see it's about 60, 70 feet away. It disappears into the gutter. Um. I think we're going in the sewers. That's where we can end it for the night. (laughs) (laughs) What a perfect line. Hey, hey. Bada bing, bada boom. (laughs) Oh, man. This, this did not go the way I expected it. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Going rat hunt. A rat hunt in the sewer. This is where I... You guys are, what, level five now? Four. 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 Yeah, this is where I... I'll, I'll be very, very transparent about one thing, just because I love it, uh, and I, I'm not going to get to do it. Uh, I didn't think I'd ever get the chance to, but I have this enemy, which uh, Scott mentioned earlier... Uh, the Rat King, uh-huh. which is 
a swarm of sentient rats that make the form of a rat with a crown. <laughs> and it's a, but it, I made him a level two villain. So you guys would just be able to like plow through him. That's funny. <laughs> I like, it. like a rat king is a real thing. Yeah, yeah. It's where it's a swarm of rats Horrifying. that get stuck together. Yeah. So you, uh, Rick had a character named Puck. Mm hmm. Puck liked rats. Yeah, he really liked Puck rats. Liked to, he liked to eat them. He liked <laughs> to save them for later. He did. He tied a bunch of their tails together at the end of a stick. Yep. He made oh. his own rat king. Yep. <laughs> Puck was the greatest. Puck, uh... He died saving us. He did. Well, kind of. <laughs> he, he died in the mouth of an alligator. Yeah. Oh. But he made a, a legendary item that still exists in the world. Oh, God, he did. World. Oh, God. The staff of bad touch. It was a zombie hand on the end of a stick that he used for uh, vampiric touch. <laughs> He, he got Vampiric Touch to be a, a reach spell instead of a, a touch spell. And Ryan was like, you know what? <laughs> That's a magic item now. You're good. <laughs> oh, man, I miss, those I miss that campaign. Yeah, we died, died to a bunch of slivers, kind of. We, we started to die, and then we retreated oh. and just haven't gone back. I'm really quick. I'm going to... Uh, thanks for, for yeah. watching, anybody. Um... I don't. I don't have. I don't have the the numbers on here. Uh, we're not going to raid tonight because I'm just going to end it. But thank you for watching so much. You're all great. Uh, thanks for Ralph and Casey for the subs. B bye bye. Bye everybody. Bye bye bye. -bye.